We are about to enter the Jewish month of Adar. And we know that Mishinichnas Adar, when we enter the month of Adar, Marbim Besimcha, we increase our happiness. And that makes sense. Because soon, hopefully, we'll be celebrating the happiest of Jewish holidays, Purim. Back when the Holy Temple stood, on the first day of the month of Adar, a public announcement would be made reminding every Jew to start donating a half shekel towards the purchase of the communal sacrifices in the temple. The Talmud tells us that God knew that someday the wicked Haman would offer a massive donation, 10,000 talents of silver, for the right to annihilate, to destroy all of the Jews. And so God preempted that donation by asking each Jew to donate a half shekel. But that's a curious statement of the sages in the Talmud. Think about it. Why should Haman's donation, even of a massive amount of money, have any power in heaven? He's donating the money for a terribly sinister cause, to destroy the Jews. But apparently we see from here that if someone digs deep into their pocket, someone sacrifices, it does create forces in the heavenly spheres. Second question, if God wants to preempt a massive donation from an enemy of the Jewish people? Why doesn't he do it through a massive donation from a wealthy Jewish person? Jewish history is filled with examples of wealthy Jews who dug deep into their pockets, who sacrificed, who gave huge amounts to Jewish causes. So apparently we see from here that that modest donation of only a half shekel had more power than a huge donation from a wealthy individual. Why? The answer is obvious, because every Jew donated the half shekel. So they were bound together in unity, in brotherhood, in achtas. Nowadays, the temple no longer stands. So how can we grab some of that unity? We can start, as the month of Adar begins, getting ready for our gifts, our gift giving. One of the hallmark rituals instituted by the rabbis on Purim Day is for each of us to give a gift of ready-made foods to a fellow. The gift can and should be modest because if it's too elaborate, we run into the problem of perhaps forcing people to feel like they have to keep up with the Schwartzes. And think, when Esther, in the crucial moment of the Purim story, asked Mordechai to gather all the Jews of Shushan together to fast for her before she went to see the king to beg for mercy for the Jewish people, if all she wanted them to do was just to fast, they could have done that in their own homes. Mordechai wouldn't have had to gather them. Obviously, the power wasn't just that they were fasting, it was that they were fasting together, united in brotherhood. And so if each of us gets ready and prepares our gifts and gives them to each other, we can grab some of that massive force, some of that power of Jewish unity and brotherhood and achdas. And what better example to set for our children at the youngest of ages? They can start preparing their little gifts now for each of their friends or for their teachers. And then when the big day comes, when they don their costumes and they go out to give and receive gifts, that excitement. We're creating muscle memory. We're making them generous, and we're making them feel that each one is part of something bigger, is part of the greater Jewish community. And when that doorbell rings, who knows who might be there with a gift for them or for you?